here. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ai, for the introduction. Uh, hello, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Arito Kodiat from the UNESCO Office Jakarta, and I'm uh, basically I'm partly working under science as well as partly under the IOC, which is the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission. So uh, what I'm going to share with you is uh, what is IOC and UNESCO role in global coordination for the tsunami wa early warning and mitigation system uh, and the achievement of the Indian Ocean tsunami early warning and mitigation system. Uh, my work here in UNESCO office Jakarta is focusing only on Indian Ocean because uh, uh, I'll tell you a little bit later on the presentations how it is basically Globally, it is being distributed in terms of the uh, coordination. So uh, I think this has been mentioned several times uh, in terms of deadly disaster in uh, recent times. But I think what the point that I would like to share with you is that most of the death of the disaster is caused by hydrometeorological hazard or disaster as well as geophysical disasters. And so far, earthquake and tsunamis are on the top of the list in terms of number of casualties, uh, which is followed by storm. And we also know that the disaster is now a basically transboundary in nature. So it is not only affecting uh, one country or one region or one part, but it's actually uh, transboundary without uh, looking into what are the, uh, the limitations of the states or the country. And uh, in the end, I will also mention to you that the cooperation of early warning is very crucial in terms of building resilience. And this is basically also related to the Sendai framework of uh, disaster, Sendai framework for disaster reductions, which is highlighting in terms of the need for uh, transboundary cooperation. Uh, okay, so some initiatives in terms of regional cooperation. Uh, the IOC UNESCO uh, has been mandated in terms of uh, collaborate and coordinate in terms of regional collaboration for tsunami warning and mitigation system. Of course, the WMO looking into the tropical cyclone programs, ISDR in terms of global and regional platforms and so forth. But this is basically mean, um, uh, uh, stressing more in terms of uh, the importance of regional co uh, collaborations. And this regional collaborations is basically, uh, in the end, strengthening the uh, national capacities uh, of the different countries participating in this regional collaboration. So we know that 2004, okay. the world changes. Uh, there is the uh, tsunami in 26th of December. It is a, a massive tsunami, uh, which is 9.1. With a mega thrust, uh, the rupture is about 100 and, uh, 1,300 kilometers, uh, which lasts over about 12 minutes. And it's affected uh, different uh, countries within the Indian Ocean. Uh, the world at that time watched through the uh, unprecedented. Of course, there are much more better coverage uh, during the 2011 in Japan. But I think in 2004, it's also created a shock into the across the world, especially across the Indian Ocean uh, countries. These are some of the pictures that is affecting in uh, Thailand, uh, Sri Lanka, in Colombo, in Indonesia, in Banda Aceh, uh, as well as in uh, India, in the Andaman uh, countries. And to 2004. Uh, raised the casualties until about uh, 230,000 people. It displaced about 1.6 million people, and the economic loss is about uh, 14 billions, and it is affecting uh, many countries in the Indian Ocean. And uh, even from uh, small islands such as uh, Sri Lanka, uh, Maldives, Seychelles, uh, were also affected by this uh, tsunami in 2004. And because of this, there are requests for an early coordination efforts uh, in 2004. After 2004, uh, I think it was mentioned, the World Conference on Disaster Reduction in Kobe in January 2005, uh, which is 
uh, immediately after this uh, event. Uh, there are a series of uh, meetings that uh, initiate the establishment of the uh, tsunami warning and mitigation system in the Indian Ocean. Uh, there was a ministerial meeting in Phuket uh, in, also in January, uh, right after the Kobe. Uh, there is an international cooperation meeting, uh, coordination meetings in uh, Paris, as well as uh, international coordination meetings in uh, Grand Bay in Mauritius in April 2005. And so you can see that it is actually a series of meetings within a month uh, after the uh, big event in 2004. And in June, uh, where we have the 23rd inter Governmental Oceanographic Commission Assembly, it was decided that uh, in terms of global coordination for tsunami warning and mitigation system, it is divided into four areas, which is the first one is the Pacific, and the second one is Indian Ocean, and then the Caribbean, as well as the North at East Atlantic and the Mediterranean Seas. And all, each of these uh, basins or each of these region is administered by what we call the intergovernmental coordinating groups, uh, which uh, each of this uh, ICG have its own secretariat. And also they agreed to establish what they call the Tsunami Information Center, uh, which is basically supporting these, the activities of the uh, ICGs. So the, in the Pacific, uh, there is actually already the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, uh, formerly known as ICG ITSU, which was convened in 1968. Uh, but in the other basins, Caribbean, Indian Ocean, and Northeast Atlantic, at that time, there are no everything is being uh, supported by the PTWS. So we had the first session of the ICG IOTWMS, which is focusing in Indian Ocean, in August 2009, uh, 2005. So this is just a, a picture showing how it is uh, divided in terms of global tsunami warning systems. Uh, as you can see, uh, Pacific is the biggest, and since it's quite vast in the Pacific, so they also divided into several uh, warning centers. You have on the north, the Atlantic uh, Alaska tsunami warning centers, and then you have the Northwest Pacific tsunami warning centers, and on the south, you have the Southwest Pacific tsunami warning centers, mm -hmm. Uh, and in the Pacific, they are also now establishing the South China Sea Tsunami Warning Centers. While in the area, area basically is focusing on the North East Atlantic and Mediterranean Seas, uh, the Indian Ocean Tsunami Warning Mitigation Center systems, and the Caribbean. And all of these basins has already established their own TIC, which is called Tsunami Information Center. So in Indian Ocean, we have the IOTIC, which is the Indian Ocean Tsunami Information Center. And this IOTIC is also based in UNESCO Office Jakarta. And in the Pacific, uh, they already have the International Tsunami Information Center, which is based in uh, Hawaii. Uh, it was agreed that it has to be an end and uh, tsunami early warning system. So looking from the regional uh, aspect into the local, uh, looking into from the uh, monitoring and detections until saving life of the communities at the lowest level, either villages or uh, lower than the villages. So it, the warning systems needs to be uh, complete from the upstreams to the downstreams, from the hazard detections until preparedness and response. Within, UNASC, uh, within IOC, uh, we have uh, a tsunami program, uh, which is of course, uh, it is under the assembly or the executive councils, and we are always in coordination with the other uh, uh, sister agencies, WMO, ISO, IMO, uh, ISDR, UNDP. Uh, we have a working group on tsunami and other sea level related warning and mitigation system, uh, which is uh, called TAUS, and this TAUS uh, works supported by two task teams, one task teams which is looking into the tsunami watch operations and the other task team working on the disaster management and uh, preparedness. And all of this, basically there are four ICGs, 
but I'm focusing more in the ICG for the Indian Ocean Tsunami Warning and Mitigation System. Uh, we have two working groups. Uh, one is looking at the uh, risk, community awareness and preparedness, and the other working group looking at the detection and warning and dissemination. Uh, in Indian Ocean, we have two main sources, which is on the uh, Sumatra subduction zones, as well as in the Makran subduction zones. So we agreed to establish a regional working group looking at the Makran subduction zones, which is the Northwest Indian Ocean. Uh, we established several task teams to work on specific issues. Uh, there are two task teams at present looking at the IO wave exercise or the Indian Ocean wave exercise, as well as a task team looking at the capacity assessment of tsunami uh, preparedness of the member, st uh, the member states. Uh, this is the structure of the ICG. Uh, we have one chair and two vice chairs. Uh, at present, the chair is from Indonesia and the vice chair is from Oman and Sri Lanka. And if you see in the map, uh, there are 24 member states in the Indian Ocean. However, out of this 24, uh, I mean 28 member states, but only 24, which is on the green color, is who is already established uh, the national tsunami warning centers in which that we can engage with. There are four still other countries, UAE, Djibouti, Somalia, and the British Indian uh, Ocean territories does not have uh, the tsunami contacts uh, that we can actually engage with. The red one shows the tsunami service providers. So these are the three countries, India, Indonesia, and Australia who are responsible in providing uh, information about uh, tsunami threats to the 24 active uh, member states. Uh, some of the guiding principles of the Indian Ocean Tsunami Warning Mitigation System, it is basically international and multilateral uh, cooperations. Uh, and IOC have the, uh, gov uh, uh, the role of providing the governance uh, it is a system of systems, uh, so it is fully interoperable network between the tsunami service providers, which is the three countries, India, Australia, in, uh, Australia, India, and Indonesia, and the national tsunami warning centers in the 24 member states. There are clear definitions of what is the roles and responsibilities of each of these, uh, either the service providers as well as the warning centers. And a strong policy basis. Uh, it is fully owned by the countries. Uh, the objective is to protect all countries. We are based on free and open data exchange. Uh, the tsunami service providers only provide advice, which is if there is threat or no threat. And the warning is the responsibility of the national warning centers of the member states. And we always conducted performance and monitoring of the activity, especially if there are uh, events. Uh, the uh, tsunami early warning system in the Indian Ocean are based on the three pillars. Uh, we look into the risk assessment and reduction. So we systematically collected data and undertake risk assessments. The second pillar is detection and warning and disseminations. Uh, we develop hazard detections, monitoring early warning services, uh, communicate information on a threat as well as early warning. And the third pillar looking into awareness and uh, response. So as you can see, I mentioned before that we have two working groups, uh, risk, awareness and response. The two pillars is being handled by one working group and the other working group looking into the detection, warning, and dissemination. In Pillar 1, Risk Assessment, uh, we have published tools, methods, and guidelines on tsunami risk assessment. Uh, we conducted several tra uh, regional trainings uh, for the member states. Uh, we also published uh, Indian Ocean's uh, probabilistic uh, regional tsunami hazard maps, uh, conducted uh, assessment and awareness on the Makran tsunami hazard, uh, organized several regional workshops on tsunami risk assessment and modeling, as well as uh, providing support to the member states in tsunami risk assessment management, uh, uh, policy support, as well as guidelines for tsunami exercise uh, activities.
In pillar two, we look in more into the detection warning disseminations. So we identify the surface definitions, which cover the area of surfaces, uh, the stations, the products, the thresholds, as well as the coast, uh, coastal uh, forecast zones and uh, formats uh, in terms of the uh, warning and disseminations. Uh, there is a tsunami surface framework, which is three interoperable tsunami surface providers, uh, as well as a network of the warning centers. We have expanded greatly the seismic and sea level monitoring networks. We have developed a harmonized threat information by the three TSPs. So uh, every country will receive information uh, from the three countries, but it is an ad, uh, a harmonized threat information. Uh, national warnings, again, it is the, the responsibility of each uh, country. So uh, either it's the warning center or the disaster management office. Uh, throughout, we start, uh, after we start in operation, uh, we have handled several events. Uh, we have a yearly performance of, uh, assessment and a six monthly communication test uh, between the tsunami service providers and the national warning centers. And uh, we have had the interim surface of uh, GMA and the Pacific. Okay, uh, I have a little more time left. So this is, I'm just showing, this is the seismic network in 2004 before this uh, tsunami happens. And this is our seismic network now uh, in which that it uh, has been in, uh, tremendously increasing. Uh, especially in the uh, countries uh, in Indonesia, in Thailand, as well as in Australia. Uh, this is the sea level network, uh, where we ha only have four sea level gauge at that time in 2004. And this is the sea level network that we have 10 years after, uh, including uh, about seven uh, dark buoys as well as a number of uh, tight gauges along the coast in the eastern as well as in the western part of Indian Ocean. Uh, the operational elements is basically the tsunami surface providers will uh, look into the seismological data. Uh, we have already modeling uh, algorithm of the different uh, scenarios and monitoring the sea level data. Uh, this is being conducted by the three TSPs and provide the information to the warning centers and the warning centers is responsible in providing the warning to the public. Uh, from the TSP to the warning centers, we use five formats, the GTS, uh, SMS, fax, emails, and web. And for the uh, warning from the national warning centers to the communities, they also use different uh, mode, uh, television, radio, SMS, sirens, web, or emails. In Pillar 3, we are basically focusing on awareness and response. Uh, we develop education materials. Uh, we have conducted over 100 capacity development workshops and standard operating procedures for the disaster warning center, uh, disaster, tsunami warning center and disaster management office. Uh, the IOTIC has been established in UNESCO office Jakarta. We conducted several uh, events. Uh, so this is the information centers, which is based in Jakarta. Uh, the IOTIC is focusing on four programs, which is uh, the Indian Ocean Tsunami Ready programs and recognitions, the Tsunami Evacuation Map Plans procedures for the Indian Ocean member states, end-to-end -end tsunami exercise and drills, uh, either at the level of community and schools, as well as preserving uh, past tsunamis information for uh, future preparedness. Uh, these are some of the materials that has been produced by the IOTIC. Uh, we develop uh, training modules, uh, booklets, as well as videos for uh, awareness and education. We conducted Indian Ocean Wave exercise. Uh, we have conducted that in 2009, 11, 14, uh, the last one that we conducted in 2016, and the next one will be conducted in 2018. In, uh, the IOF exercise, the 24 member states participated and 12 of the member states actually includes community uh, movement. Uh, in the exercise, we have almost 59,000 people were evacuated during the exercise. 92% uh, of the exercise include the disaster management office, as well as the local disaster management office, as well as the media. 
Uh, we conducted online assessment. Uh, UNICEF are also supported in terms of observing uh, the activities, and UNSCAP also uh, assisted us in developing outreach materials. The next IO wave will be in September 2018, and the preparation has started uh, next week. The current status, uh, we are supported by different uh, budget uh, sources. Of course, the regular program from UNESCO, as well as several uh, donors like uh, funds and trust from Indonesia, from Malaysia, uh, from ESCAP, as well as from uh, Japan. The last meeting that we have is in 2017. Uh, there are some key out uh, outcomes. Uh, the first outcome is that we need to put greater emphasis on community awareness and preparedness. So in the upstream part, in terms of achieving the warning detections, it is already uh, well advanced. But I think the gap is more in the uh, community awareness and preparedness, as well as to do uh, the appropriate response if the warning is issued by the warning centers. Uh, Capacity assessment of tsunami preparedness uh, need to be carried out. Uh, we are developing the tsunami ready guidelines for the community, uh, as well as capacity development for workshops will be continued for the member states. Uh, I'm, this is basically the same thing, but uh, uh, what we are saying is that we need to focus more on the last mile. So community preparedness awareness has uh, becomes uh, uh, the focus within the next few years. In conclusions, I think the establishment of the intergovernmental and regional cooperation platforms across the ocean basins, uh, like for tropical cyclones, tsunami, uh, river basins, has uh, deepened the regional cooperations. Uh, the good regional cooperations provide uh, a strong uh, observation networks. Uh, early warning systems established for each specific hazard. Each specific hazard has its own characteristic, has its own uh, importance. However, uh, it has to be enhanced the regional and national capacity uh, for a strong uh, warning and information sharing. Uh, efforts need to be strengthened in terms of expanding the warning systems that has already built into a more multi-hazard approach. Uh, this especially related to the gaps in the last mile in the awareness and response uh, because of the, the different warnings that the community will be receiving. Uh, focus on the warning chain. There is uh, a large difference remains in the capacities in the countries, especially looking at these small uh, island developing states as well as the least developing uh, countries. Uh, strong policy support at the national level is very important uh, to ensure that the multi-hazard early warning system will be integrated and commitment towards regional collaborations uh, will be needed because uh, uh, funding from the multilateral uh, becomes uh, scarce. So national support for regional collaborations is very important. I think that's my share of presentations. Uh, thank you very much.